Okay, we're going to talk today about the treatment for pituitary tumors. And the treatment really depends on a couple of things. Number one, it depends on the size of the tumor, whether it's a macro tumor or a micro tumor. And it depends on the hormone which the tumor secretes or doesn't secrete. So let's talk about size first. By growing, pituitary tumors do two things. They press on the normal pituitary gland and cause it to malfunction, so it doesn't make enough ACTH, it doesn't make enough thyroid-stimulating hormone, it doesn't make enough uh, hormones to stimulate the testicles to make testosterone, etc., etc. And the tumor, by growing upward, presses on the nerves to the eyes, which can give you loss of side vision, or it can grow into the area where the nerves that control motion of the eyes are located, causing double vision. Or it can, of course, do both. From the standpoint, then, of the size of the tumor alone, we have visual symptoms and we have hormone hyposecreting symptoms. Then if we layer on that the secretory capability of the tumor, we have another dimension. That is to say that in addition to the normal pituitary not working properly, not making enough hormones, there is an overabundance of a given one or two hormones as a result of the tumor itself. Now let me give you an example of that. An example would be a macro tumor which secretes prolactin. Prolactin is the hormone which causes a woman to lose her menses and to develop galactorrhea causes a man to develop enlarged breasts with galactorrhea and lose libido. Now this hormone can be treated, this hormone excess can be treated with medication, Dostinex or Parlidol. And very often the medication will not only cause the tumor not to secrete the hormone, but will actually shrink the tumor so that no further treatment is necessary. On the other hand, if the tumor is a large tumor, a macro tumor, which is not causing secretory uh, symptoms, then there is no real medication that can shrink it. And we're generally speaking about surgery. The surgery almost always can be performed through the nostril or through an incision under the lip. This is called transphenoidal surgery. And a recent embellishment on that technique has been the ability to use an endoscope, a thin tube, to do the operation in a minimally invasive fashion to reduce the bulk of the tumor or eliminate the bulk of the tumor, take the pressure off the normal gland, and hopefully the normal gland will recover its function, take the pressure off the visual system, and hopefully the visual system will recover its function. Some of the other tumors which are secretory and large are not quite so easy to treat. And while surgery is certainly effective in reducing the bulk of the tumor, it's often not completely effective in reducing the secretory capability of those cells which may have been left behind. And in this situation, sometimes surgery must be supplemented with radiation therapy. The radiation therapy can be either the conventional fractionated radiation therapy or it can be stereotactic radiosurgery, depending on the amount of tumor left near the visual system and depending on the secretory residual capability of the pituitary gland itself. For microtumors, the surgical objectives are a little different. Here, we're dealing only with the secretory function of the tumor. And again, with prolactin-secreting tumors, this usually can be dealt with with medication alone. With some of the other type of tumors, those secreting growth hormone, those secreting ACTH, uh, it's more difficult to control with surgery alone and very frequently adjunctive therapy, namely radiation therapy, or even medication therapy need to be used to bring the system under control. So, to recap, 
Pituitary tumors are treated with medicine alone, if possible, or a combination of surgery and medicine, surgery and radiation, surgery, radiation, and medicine, depending on the tumor, depending on the symptoms, depending on the status and age of the patient, depending on the will of the patient and wishes of the patient, and finally, depending on the result of each of those individual treatments alone.